Hey guys, in this video, the brilliant Mr. V is going to be taking you through midpoints. Now, there are three different levels of questions here, 15 examples in total. And if you want more questions to practice once you've gone through all of these, then there are thousands more waiting for you on my website. Going to be finding the midpoint of coordinates. Now, first up with coordinates, we should be remembering that the first number in the coordinate is the x value corresponding to a number on the x axis, which I've labelled in blue, and the second number is the y coordinate, which corresponds to a y value on the y axis, which I have labelled in pink. So, looking at question one, we find the midpoint of 5, 4 and 3, 0. So we'll look at 5, 4 first, and we'll label it on the diagram. 5, 4 would be 5 on the x-axis and 4 on the y-axis, which would go here. So if you look below the green dot, you can see the 5 corresponding to the first number that's on the x-axis. And if you look to the left, you can see the 4, which corresponds to the second number, which is the y-axis. If you're not too sure about this, go and have a look at the coordinates video first. The second coordinate is 3, 0, so that would be 3 across and 0 up. And the way to find midpoints is if you have a graph to use, then all you need to do is to find the two coordinates, join them up with a straight line, and then you need to find the coordinate that is in the middle. And exactly in the middle, I'm just going to label a little circle here, we have to look at what that coordinate would be. Now, below that circle I've just drawn, is a 4, so our x coordinate would be a 4, and to the left of that circle is a 2, so the y coordinate is a 2. So the midpoint is 4, 2. Moving on to question 2, just follow the same method, so we'll draw the two coordinates. First we have 3, 5, so starting at 0, 0 in the corner, we're going to go 3 across and 5 up, making sure that the first number is on the x axis, 3 in blue and the second number is on the y-axis, 5 in pink. Then we do 1, 3, so 1 across and 3 up. Again, checking the first number is on the x-axis in blue, and the second number is on the y-axis in pink. Once you've drawn two coordinates, join them together with a line, and look for the coordinate that is exactly in the middle of that line. To write down the coordinate, look downwards onto the x-axis, and see a 2 directly below, then look to the left on the y-axis, and we can see there is a 4, so that coordinate would be 2, 4, 2 across and 4 up. Question 3 has 5, 3, so 5 across and 3 up, and it has 3, 1, 3 across and 1 up. Join them up with a straight line, and find the coordinate in the centre, and then look at the values below for the x-axis, which is a 4, our first number, and to the left for the y-axis, 2, which is our second number. So we're saying that 4, 2 is directly in the middle of 5, 3 and 3, 1. Moving on to question 4, we have 3, 2 first, 3 across and 2 up, and then we have 1, 0. So be careful with these, 1 across and then 0 up. Students can get confused with zeros. The zeros means going to lie on the axis. Join them up. Find the coordinate in the centre, and then write down the numbers it corresponds to. On the x-axis, we can see a below it. On the y-axis, we can see a 1 directly to the left of it. So the answer is 2, 1. For the final question, now I'm going to do this on the graph to start with. So we've got 4, 4, so 4 across and 4 up. And then we have 2, 0, 2 across and 0 up. Now, before I draw the line, there's a method to do this without using the diagram. And it's just to look at the numbers that are in between. So we've got a 4 and a 2 for our x coordinates in the question. So in the middle of 4 and 2, and for the y coordinates, we've got 4 and 0. So in the middle of 4 and 0 is 2. So the answer looks like it's going to be 3, 2. But if I double check this by doing it properly, let's join up the lines, circle the coordinate in the centre. We can see below the circle we've got a 3, to the left we've got a 2, so it actually is 3, 2. Now this method can be important for later. You do sometimes get asked to find a midpoint without a diagram. So you just look at the x coordinates, you look at the y coordinates, and you kind of pitch the number in the middle, and that can work as well. For the medium questions, we now have a large graph, and it's one that's capable of showing negative numbers. 
Now, the way to remember how these work is that your X coordinate handles left and right. The Y coordinate handles going up and down. Positive number, you're going up. And every negative number, you're going downwards. So keep this in mind when we're doing these questions. And then with this graph, I've labeled where the Y and X axes are. Where the Y and X axis cross in the middle, which just highlighted with a little blue dot, that is zero, zero. So we're all going, always going to start counting from that point. And we get a negative number, then we're going to count down or to the left. For a positive number, we're going to count up or to the right. So looking at the first question, we've got the midpoint of negative four, negative one, and zero, negative three. So same as easy questions, just label one coordinate at a time. So firstly, negative four, negative one, we're going four to the, look at the key, four to the left and then looking at key again negative one for the second number will be downwards so the coordinate would be where i've just labeled on the diagram we've gone four to the left and one down from the center zero three we're going zero left or right and we're going down by three so you'll end up with where i've just labeled from this point it's the same method so you're going to join up the two coordinates going to identify the coordinate in the center and then we need to figure out the x and y coordinates now they're not written onto this graph but we can count across so that circle it is two to the left from the center so that would give us negative two then looking at the y coordinates it's two downwards from the center so that's negative two so from the center, it's two to the left and two down. So it'll be negative two, negative two. Moving on to question two, we have four, four. They're both positive, so that'd be four to the right and four up. So let's label that one. And then we have zero, six. So that's zero across and then six upwards. Let's label that one. Join them up with a line and identify the coordinate. Look at the X coordinate first. How far across is it from the center? It's two to the right, so that would be a positive two. Going right is always positive. And it is five upwards from the middle. So going up is always positive, so that would be a five. So we're saying that two five is in the middle of four four and zero six. Question three, we start with zero, negative two. So we're going zero across, and then negative two means we're going down by two. Then we have two, negative eight. So start in the center, we're going two upwards. And then I'm going to count eight places to the left. So you should end up where I'm labeling on the diagram. Then join them together. And we have to identify the coordinate that is in the center, which should be around about here. Now, with these larger ones, it might be a little bit unclear. So just look at the x-axis first. I can see that from where I've circled, it's four to the left to the left and most coordinate and four to the right, to the right and most coordinate. And then looking at the y-axis, I can see if I go up by two, I'll reach the upper coordinate. And if I go down by two, I'll reach the lower coordinate. So it does seem like it's in the middle. Let's look at these coordinates then. Firstly, it is one, two, three, four to the left center. So if, and we write the four. Then for the y-axis, looking up or down. Now it's actually online with the center, so it's gonna be a zero. The answer is negative four and zero. Question four, we start with negative two, one. So negative two to the left and positive one for the y would be one up. Then we have negative eight, negative five. Negative eight for x would be eight to the left and negative five for the y would be five down. Label those coordinates. Let's join them together and then let's identify the central point. If you're not sure about that one, you can see that it's diagonal three squares down to the lower coordinate and diagonal three squares up to the upper coordinate. So you can always kind of measure things at the end and do make sure it's exactly in the middle. A ruler would work as well. That'd be fine. So look at the X coordinate first from the blue dot in the center, zero, zero. It's one, two, three, four, five to the left. Left is negative, so it'd be negative five. And then for the center, it's two down negative so two so the answer is negative five negative two now the final question we've got a three and a negative three now right in the middle a three and negative three should be zero for the x coordinate then look at the y coordinates now we've got negative three and negative seven so what's in between three and seven so you've got four five and six 
So five would be in the middle of those, so, and the negatives would be a negative five. So the midpoint should be zero and a negative five. But let's double check. So let's draw these coordinates onto the graph. So three, negative three. So the three would be positive three. It would be three to the right on the x-axis, and the negative three would be three down on the y-axis. Then we have negative three, negative seven. So negative three on the x-coordinate would be three to the left, and negative seven would be seven downwards. And along that path, let's look in the middle for our central coordinate. And let's check, is that zero, negative five? Well, it's right on the y-axis, so yeah, it'll be zero on the x-axis. And then for the second number, is it five down? Yes, it is. So we know we've got it right. So again, you always do have the option of doing these without a diagram. Now, with the herd questions, we're going to have a look at doing these without any diagrams at all in a little bit more detail. So let's take a look at question one. So we have negative three, negative 10. Now we're going to call these x1. That's the x coordinate number one. And we're going to have x uh, y1. That's y coordinate number one. Then we have a second coordinate, we have 1, 14, so the 1 is going to be our x coordinate number 2, and 14 is going to be y coordinate number 2. Now, why have I labelled those coordinates in that way? Well, it's because we've got a formula, and the formula to find the midpoint is as follows. You add together the x coordinates, so x coordinate 1 plus x coordinate number 2. And once you've added them together, to find the middle of them, you have to divide them by 2. That's to find the x coordinate. Now, to find the y coordinate, we do the same thing with the y's. So, y coordinate number 1 plus y coordinate number 2. Once you add them together, divide them by 2 to find the center. So, let's try applying that formula. So, for our first question, let's look at the x coordinates first. So, we're going to add together negative 3 and positive 1, and that is going to give us negative 3 plus 1 would give us negative 2, and then we're going to divide that by 2. So negative 2 divided by 2 is going to give us negative 1. So we know that the x coordinate is going to be negative 1. Now we're going to have a look at the y coordinate, so we're going to add the numbers together. So negative 10 plus 14 should give us, so negative 10 plus 10 would be 0, and we've got another 4 left over. That'll give us 4, and then we're going to divide the 4 by 2, which will give us 2. So we know the y coordinate is 2. So the midpoint is equal to negative 1, 2. So let's try this again with question 2. So firstly, we're going to add together our two x coordinates. So we have negative 9, and we're going to add to that a negative 1. Now we add a negative number onto another negative number, again, even bigger negative number, so that should give us negative 10. And then we need to divide that by 2 to find the centre of those two numbers. And that will give us negative 5. So our x coordinate would be negative 5. Then let's add together the y coordinates, so negative 1 plus another negative number, negative 15, so that should give us negative 16. Let's have that to find the centre. So 16 divided by 2 should give us negative 8. So our y coordinate is negative 8. I just write that out as a full coordinate with the brackets and the comma in the centre. And we have our final answer negative 5, negative 8. Now you're looking at question 3. So first add together the x coordinates. So we have 1 and a half and we have a 5. So 5 plus 1 and a half would give us 6 and 1 half, or 6.5. Now we need to find the centre of that, so we need to divide that by 2. So 6 and a half divided by 2. So half 6 is 3, and half of a half would be 1 quarter. So it'll be 3 and 1 quarter. Then coordinates, we have negative 10, and we're adding on negative 3. So two next numbers together, that's going to give us negative 13. We want the centre of that, so divide it by 2. So half of 10 is 5, half of 3 is 1.5. So 5 and 1.5 will give us 6.5, or 6 and a half. And it was a negative number, so it'll be negative 6 and a half. So our final answer is going to be 3 and 1 quarter, and negative 
six and one half for our final answer. Now for question four, so firstly add together the x coordinates, so our first numbers in each bracket, so we've got one half and we've got three, which will give us three and one half. Let's divide it by two to find the center, so three and a half divided by two. So three divided by two is one and a half, and half a half is a quarter. One and a half plus another quarter would be one and three quarters. If the fractions are confusing you, you can do the same thing with decimals. And I think I'll show you that for this question. It doesn't matter if you write your answer as a fraction or as a decimal. So 0 0.5 plus 3 is 3.5. And then 3.5 divided by 2. So you might want to use the calculator here if you'd like. But it might be a little bit easier now with decimals to do it and arithmetic. So half of 3 is 1.5. Half of 0.5 would be 0.25, so 5 and 0.25 would be 0.75, so it would be 1.75 or 1 and 3 quarters. Again, either way is fine. Looking at the y coordinates, we have negative 3, and we're adding a positive 3, so that will give us 0. And there's no need to have 0, we know that half 0 is 0, so we can write down our final answer. So it's going to be 5 and 0. For the final question, so add together the x coordinates, that would be the 1 and the negative 12. Now, negative 12 plus 1 would give us negative 11. Remember, we add to negative number, then we're going to get closer towards 0. And then we divide that by 2 to find the centre, or the midpoint rather. So half of 10 is 5, half of 1 is a half, so that will give us 5.5. It was a negative number, so it'd be negative five and a half. Looking at the y coordinates, we've got nine, and we're adding on negative three. So two negative numbers will give us a large negative number. That's going to give us negative 12. Then let's find the halfway point, the midpoint, by dividing by two. Negative 12 divided by two will give us negative six. So we can write down the final answer. It's going to be negative 5.5 and negative six. So with the hard questions, we can see that you can find the midpoints even if you don't have the graph by using the formula. You will, however, have to remember that formula yourself. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have explained scratches.